Good day, class, and thank you for attending our lecture. So for this meeting, we're going to tackle your lesson three, which would involve the chemical examination of urine. Now, please take note, class, that this lesson is very important when it comes to your AUBF, especially on the reg in regards to the board exam, since most questions... Regarding the boards on AUBF would uh, come from this lesson. So here you will understand, class, how uh, the different methods or the different ways to perform chemical examination of urine. So let's start with the purpose of chemical examination of urine, class. Now, please take note, class, that you perform chemical examination of urine to validate what we have seen during the physical aspect of urinalysis. The back class in the previous lesson, in the introduction of urinalysis and the physical uh, physical examination, you would you would test for the color, the clarity, even in some in some uh, in some books, even the odor would be would be tested. Now let's say in the case of you found or you you encounter a urine that is turbid. Now, if it's turbid class, you would presume, you would presume class that the sample would have, uh, would be positive for, or would be positive for ut urinary tract infection. My UTI yung patient nyo. So what you would do to confirm if the patient has UTI is that you could perform a chemical test. So that's the importance of performing a chemical test class. It validates what you have seen in the physical exam or in the physical examination of the urine. Now, the chemical examination class would usually involve manual methods of various chemicals. These methods are qualitative. So when you say qualitative class, please take note that the results would either be positive or negative or the methods would show a semi-quantitative result. Now, in chemical examination of urine class, the most used, the most used uh, material is your reagent strips. Now, reagent strips class allowed the chemical screening of urine to become a sensitive and rapid procedure. Dati kasi class, uh, in, in order to perform chemical examination of urine, you would perform very tedious very tedious processes. But when the reagent strip was introduced, class, itong nakikita nyo sa picture na to, chemical screening of urine became a sensitive and rapid procedure. Usually, in minutes, class, may resulta na kagad. So, we will discuss here yung, yung uh, reagent strip nyo. Now, what is a reagent strip, class? Now, the reagent strip, class, please take note, is also known as a dipstick. This is a narrow strip of plastic with small pads attached to it. So if you take a look at this, ito yung reagent strip nyo class known as also as a dipstick. It is a very, very narrow strip of plastic and you would find different pads. Itong pads na to are known as your reagent pads and they would test for various for various parameters, iba-ibang parameters class, such as your leukocytes, nitrite, urobilinogen, protein, pH, blood, specific gravity, ketone, bilirubin, and glucose. So dito class, you are testing for 10 parameters. Imagine, oh, on a single, on a very narrow strip of plastic, you are able to perform 10 parameters. Imagine yung class dati, if there was no reagent strip, siguro kawawa yung medtech. Kawawa ang medtech class. If you would test them manually, very tedious yung process. Now, each pad class, as I mentioned, would contain reagents for different reactions, allowing for the simultaneous determination of several tests. Now, colors generated are compared against a brand specific color chart. Now, please take note, class. Yung mga reagent pad, the reagent pads class would have a 
fix color. May fix color sila. This is the negative color. Now, if you take a look at the picture, yan yung mga color nila kapag negative sila. Yan yung fix color nila. Now, once you dip, once you dip this, once you dip the reagent strip sa urine, there would be a color change depending on the contents of your urine. So, ulitin ko ha, yung reagent strip nyo class has a fix negative color. Now, when you dip your reagent strip in urine, depending on the contents of the urine, it could become positive. And if it's positive, there would be a color change. Let's say, class, yung urine nyo. Your urine came from a diabetic patient. Now, the original color is itong bluish-green na color na to or ano ba, uh, blue-green or basta blue. I, I, I can't explain ka nung anong kulay yan. Klasi. Basta yung color blue na yan. That is the negative constant or the, neg the fixed negative color of your reagent strip. Now, you dip the reagent strip sa diabetic urine. Since diabetic yung patient class, there would be a color change. And the color change class will depend on the amount of glucose present. Let's say that the patient is very diabetic class. A chronic case. When you say chronic, matagal na. Very long case of diabetes that has not been treated. You would find that the, the color changed from the negative fixed color. It became like this. And if you would read this on the chart, if you read it on the chart class, you would find an interpretation. So nakiki nakikita nyo dyan sa picture. You could see in the picture, mayroong apat na plus sign. One, two, three, four. You would report that as four plus. Or you could report it in their quantitative amount, which is 110 millimole per liter. So let's say, let's, let me give you another example. Let's say yung urine nyo class is turbid. Most of the time, if your urine is turbid, it would become positive for protein. So from a fixed negative color, once you dip it on the turbid urine, there would be a change in color. And again, depending on the amount of the elements or the contents of the urine for protein, it could go as high as 4 plus. Or if you want to report this quantitatively, greater than 20 grams per liter of urine. So that's how you would read uh, reagent strip class. After dipping, you're going to compare it into a chart, a specific color chart. Then you would be able to identify uh, if it's if the patient is has high amounts of glucose in the urine, high amounts of protein in the urine. So this is the procedure class on how you would perform reagent strip. The first thing you would do class is that you're going to dip the reagent strip briefly. When you say briefly, mabilis lang class, very fast, into a well-mixed urine at room temperature. So you need to make sure class that the urine is properly mixed. After dipping class, remove excess urine by touching the edge of the strip to the container upon withdrawal. So kung ito yung urine container nyo, class, slide nyo siya. Slide nyo siya sa edge, yung reagent strip, so that the, the excess urine would be removed and would go back to the container. So do remember that, ha? You remove excess urine by touching the edge of the strip to the container upon withdrawal. Now, Pag na-withdraw nyo na yung, yung reagent strip from the urine container, blot the edge of the strip into an absorbent pad. Sa laboratory in real life class, most of the time wala tayong absorbent pad. What we would use is a tissue. So kunwari ito yung tissue, ang gagawin mo, pagilid class ha, on the side, ibablot mo. Itataktak mo siya. Itataktak mo siya sa tissue but make sure, class, that the tissue does not come into contact with the reagent pad. After that, class, you let it stand and you wait for a specified amount of time. When I say specified amount of time, if you take a look at the picture, 
for every test class or for every parameter, you would wait for a certain amount of reading time. Pag sinabi mong reading time, this is the amount of time you would wait before reading the result. So for leukocytes, before reading it, if it's negative or positive or uh, 4 plus, 3 plus, you need to wait 120 seconds. For nitrite, you need to wait for 60 seconds. Urinobilinogen, protein, pH, and blood, 60 seconds. For bilirubin and glucose, you need to wait for 30 seconds. Ketone, 40 seconds. Specific gravity, 45 seconds. So after waiting for the for the reading time or the standing time class, the standing time, you would now read the result by comparing it against the chart. Now, bibigyan ko kayo ng tip if you want to memorize this. Whenever you would memorize this class, memorize them by their group or kung alin yung mga parameters that have the same waiting time. In this case, nitrogen, urobilinogen, protein, pH, blood, all are 60 seconds. Bilirubin in glucose, 30 seconds. Followed by ketone, 40. Specific gravity, 45 seconds. And the longest waiting time class is leukocytes. After that, compare the color reaction of each pad to the manufacturer's color chart. Now, in every test class, there is what we call quality control. When you say quality control, this is a way you need, these are things you need to do to assure that the results are accurate. Now, the following ways are to, to assure correct testing techniques. Number one class, please do not forget, is to always mix the urine specimen before dipping the strip. Then never allow the strip to remain in the urine for extended periods. Kaya nga kanina, di ba, the, the adjective or the word used was briefly, very short, very fast class. Then never forget to blood the edge of the strip after dipping to prevent run over. What do I mean by run over? Balik tayo dito. Let's say class hindi ka nag-decide. You did you did you did not you did not blot the reagent strip against a adsorbent pad or tissue. What happens class is yung excess urine dito could possibly drip to the other reagent pad. And this could lead to erroneous result. Basically nagraran over siya, lumilipat siya dun sa it it moves the urine, the excess urine could contaminate the other reagent pads, causing erroneous results. So you need to prevent that class. Then color reactions of the dipstick with the color chart should be red. Bakit take note class ha? red horizontally. So kung ito yung color chart nyo class, do not read it ng paganito. Hindi vertical. Instead, you would read it vertically. Ay, horizontally rather. You would read it horizontally, not vertically. Pakitandaan yan. Then follow the specific timing of each pad. So do memorize class the time ha, for every parameter. Then find a good light source or use a good light source. Never interchange reagent strips and color charts from different manufacturers. So do not use class uh, color chart from another manufacturer. Allow the refrigerated specimen to return to room temp before using reagent strips. Diba one way to preserve urine is via refrigeration. So if you're going to refrigerate your, your urine, make sure class that before using, you would allow it to return to room temp. Then protect reagent strips from deterioration caused by moisture, volatile chem chemicals, chemicals, heat, and light. Excuse me. So make sure, class, that your reagent strips are stored in a dry place as well as in a room temperature. Now, bottle, make sure, class, that the bottle is tightly resealed immediately. Store at room temp below 30 degrees centigrade but never refrigerate. Never use past the expiration date. Then be careful not to touch the chemical pads itself with your fingers. Kaya nga class yung reagent strip nyo, meron siyang free area. Yung free area, that is where you would hold the reagent strip.
So never touch class the chemical pads. Never touch. Always run positive controls and negative control. Do this every 24 hours after each ship or when you open a new bottle. Manual methods can be done using tablets or liquid chemical when questionable results are obtained or the urine is highly pigmented. So in cases class that the sample is uh, contaminated or you're having questionable results, you could perform the tedious manual methods, which I included. I believe ginawa nyo rin yan sa laboratory. Yung mga Benedict's test, later I will explain. So let's start with the different parameters class. So I will discuss them one by one. Now, to make it easier class, ang, ang way natin for, for me to help you as students in memorizing this, because it is very important, eh. whether we like it or not class, this needs to be included in your AUBF because this is a major, uh, major coverage in the board exam. Now, to make it easier, for every parameter class, I will include the principle. I will include the principle. I will include the reaction interferences, yung mga nagkakos ng problem sa result. And I will also include other tests, yung mga manual methods, and their clinical significance. So when I say clinical significance, yung mga sakit. So ulitin ko klasa, for every parameter, I will include the principle. I will include other tests if meron. Their interference causes of erroneous results, and their clinical significance. So these four would be the coverage of each parameter. So let's start with your urine glucose class. Now for urine glucose class, the principle is double sequential enzymatic reaction. When you say double sequential enzymatic reaction class, you would have two enzymes responsible for the cat catalyc catalysis, catalysis of glucose reaction. Now, the reagent strip is impregnated with a mixture of the following double enzymes. Merong glucose oxidase, merong peroxidase, merong chromogen, also known as the indicator, and there's a buffer. So to explain this class, itong urine glucose na to would use two enzymes. Ang enzyme nyo class is capable of causing reactions. Now the enzymes used here are glucose oxidase and peroxidase. Now here are the reactions. The first reaction or the first process is that when your glucose plus oxygen or air it would be reacted by the enzyme glucose oxidase, forming gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide. So the first process is catalyzed by glucose oxidase, wherein the reagent pad would react with glucose and room air, leading to the production of gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide. So that's the first reaction. Now, yung second enzyme class, the peroxidase, would do this now. So, nag-produce na ng hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide produced in the first, first process will oxidize the indicator, yung chromogen, with the influence of peroxidase. Now, yung mga chromogens, take note to class. The chromogens or the indicators used are the following. Potassium iodide or tetramethylbenzidine. So if asked in your quiz, what are the chromogens or indicators used in urine glucose? Potassium iodide or tetramethylbenzidine. So the color of the chromogen from negative state to positive state would be po potassium iodide. Potassium iodide class, yung chromogen na to, would give a green to brown color. Tetramethylbenzidine would give a yellow to green color. Take note of that. Now, what are the reaction interferences in the reagent strip for glucose? So, dalawa lang yan, class. It could either cause false positive or false negative. So, what are the causes of false positive? Presence of hydrogen peroxide in the urine. Urine container that is contaminated with detergents. Other reducing sugars in urine, which does not 
pose a false positive reaction. Now, the causes of false negative naman class are ascorbic acid, high level of ketones, high specific gravity of urine, low temperature, and prolonged standing of urine. So, do memorize class the reaction interferences. Now, what are the other tests for glucose class? Now, ang other test for glucose is based on this principle, yung copper reduction test. Copper reduction test would rely on the ability of glucose and other reducing substances to reduce copper sulfate to cuprous or cuprous oxide in the presence of alkali and heat. A color change progressing from a negative blue would become green, yellow, orange, and red. So ito yung principle niya, class. Cupric, oxide, cupric sulfide rather, plus reducing substance will be oxidized by uh, or would be reduced by heat and alkali into your cuprous oxide plus oxidized substance forming a color that could be green, yellow, orange, and red. So these are the different tests that would use copper reduction principle. We have yung Benedict's test. The classic Benedict solution was created in 1908 and please take note would contain the following. Copper sulfate, sodium carbonate, sodium citrate buffer. Urine would be added to the solution, heat was applied, and the resulting precipitate was observed for color. Then there's another test class, yung Clini test tablet. The tablet would contain copper sulfate, sodium carbonate, sodium citrate, and sodium hydroxide. So, ang difference lang ng clinic test tablet nyo from Benedict's is that your clinic test would contain sodium hydroxide. Now, upon the addition of tablet to water and urine, heat is produced by the hydrolysis of sodium hydroxide. So, dito sa clinic test tablet, tablet kasi class, you will not perform heating. Ang purpose ng sodium hydroxide nyo dito is that sodium hydroxide would produce would produce heat. Wala ka kasing gagamitin uh, Bunsen burner dyan or hindi ka mag-iinit ng ano class ng urine dyan sa procedure na yan. Compared sa Benedict's. Diba sa Benedict's pakukuluan mo yung, yung urine mo. But in this case, sa clinic test, you use sodium hydroxide to produce heat and its reaction with sodium citrate. Carbon dioxide would be released from the sodium carbonate to prevent room air from interfering. Now, what are the clinical significance class of your urine? We have your, usually class, kapag nag-positive ka for urine glucose, you have a case of hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia refers to increase in blood glucose. This is usually seen in cases of diabetes mellitus. Kapag diabetes mellitus positive ka, you have a problem with your insulin. Now, insulin class, please take note, is a hormone that reduces glucose. And this is produced by the pancreas. Specifically, the beta cells, pakisulat ha, the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans. So do take note of that. Then we have your pancreatitis. Pancreatitis would lead to decreased level of insulin. So kakamention ko lang class, di ba? Ang insulin nyo is produced by the pancreas. So of course, if you have pancreatitis or inflammation of the pancreas, you have a defective pancreas. So kung defective ang pancreas mo, it cannot produce insulin, leading to a decreased level of insulin. Then, we have your pancreatic cancer class. Now, sa pancreatic cancer, it can cause increased glucagon. Now, ano ba tong glucagon na to class? Glucagon class is also a hormone that increases blood glucose. 
it's also produced in the pancreas, specifically the alpha cells of the islets of Langerhans. So in pancreatic cancer, kasi class, diba ang cancer, you would have a tumor. So the, what happens here, class, is that the tumor would cause increased secretion of glucagon, causing diabetes. Then acromegaly, this is also caused by increased growth hormone. Cushing syndrome, caused by increased cortisol. Now, ano ba tong cortisol na to, class? Now, to simplify this, kasi pag in-explain ko pa yung ano nila, bawat mechanism nila, matatagalan tayo. But to simplify, class, cortisol, class, would act, would act, on glycogen. Familiar kayo sa glycogen, di ba, class? This is the storage form. The storage form of glucose. Ang gagawin ni cortisol, class, it would act on glycogen, converting it into glucose. So kapag madami kang cortisol, seen in Cushing syndrome, the more glycogen are converted into glucose. Same with pheochromocytoma, you would have increased cortisol. If you have CNS damage, there would be increased epinephrine. Pag stress ka din, increase din ng epinephrine. Then there's your gestational diabetes, which would usually occur during pregnancy. Then aside from hyperglycemia class, uh, due to increased glucose, meron ding tinatawag na renal associated defects in the tubular reabsorption ability of kidney. Diba ang glucose nyo class is reabsorbed is reabsorbed by the kidneys. But there is a condition wherein the kidney's ability to reabsorb glucose is impaired or malfunctioning. This is seen in Fanconi syndrome, advanced renal disease, and osteomalacia. So sa tatlong sakit na to class, your kidneys are unable to reabsorb glucose back into the circulation. Seen in Fanconi, advanced renal disease, and osteomalacia. So do memorize them, class. Now let's go to the second parameter, yung protein nyo, class. Now for protein, the principal class is the protein error of indicators. Here, class, the pad is impregnated with an indicator. Usually, class, ang indicator dito would be tetrabrompinol blue or tetrachlorophenol, or tetrabromosulfomtalin. Now, the acid buffer would maintain the pH of the said indicator at 3. So, yung original pH class ng indicator nyo is set at an acidic pH 3, giving them a yellow coloration in the absence of protein. So, yung negative color ng pad nyo, due to having a pH of 3, is yellow. Now, by being acidic class, pag acidic siya, it would contain many hydrogen ions. Now, proteins, primarily albumin, when present in the urine, are said to accept hydrogen ions from the indicator. So, yung indicator nyo class that is acidic, marami siyang hydrogen ions. Ngayon, kapag ang urine mo, if your urine is positive for protein and you dip and you dip the the reagent strip sa urine gagawin ni ni protein mo especially albumin is that kukunin niya he will take he will take the hydrogen ions or he will accept hydrogen ions now due to due to the, the protein or the albumin taking the hydrogen ions this will now alter the pH of the indicator, turning them class alkaline. So from acidic pH of 3, <coughs> excuse me, because, because positive siya for, pro, for protein, kukunin niya yung hydrogen ions, turning the pH of the indicator alkaline. And their color would progress from yellow, magiging green siya, up to blue, depending on the amount of protein. Color is then reported in terms of negative, trace, 1+, plus, 2+, plus, 3+, plus, and 4+. Plus. Please take note, class, that the protein albumin is the most sensitive 
to the reagent pot because it contains many amino groups that are ready to accept hydrogen ions. So clear yun, class A. Yung hydrogen ions na yun, it's responsible for making the pad acidic. Ang proteins nyo, gusto nilang kumukuha ng hydrogen ions. Kapag nabawasan yung hydrogen ions, magiging alkaline yung pad nyo. Causing a change in color from green to blue, depende sa dami ng protein. Now, what are the reaction interferences class for protein? So for false positive, this is usually seen in highly buffered alkaline urine. Pigmented urine class, especially contaminated by phenazopyridine intake. Presence of detergents, antiseptics like chlorhexidine, and high specific gravity. While false negative results class would be seen in other proteins than albumin. So, pwede kang maging false positive, a false negative sa protein class if there are other proteins in the urine aside from albumin. Take note of that. Now, what are the other tests for protein class? The most common test na ginagawa sa lab na manual method is yung SSA method or the sulfosalicylic acid precipitation test. Now, you would perform, depende sa laboratory class, it depends on the lab, you would perform SSA to confirm positive results in a dipstick. It utilizes the principle of cold precipitation tests using the reagent sulfosalicic acid that would react equally with all types of protein. Grading of turbidity is reported in terms of negative 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, and 4 plus. So, I believe ginawa nyo na to sa laboratory nyo, itong SSA class. Now, what are the clinical significance of urinary protein class? So, please take note class that your urinary protein would become positive sa urine at 30 mg per dl. Meaning class, kapag ang this is the renal threshold. Kapag nagkaroon ka na ng 30 mg per dl sa sa urine mo it would become it would become detected hindi pala siya renal threshold class sorry that's the amount this is the amount class for urine to become positive for protein so take note of that now the positivity of protein does not always signify renal disease class. So you need to perform further testing. Now, kapag meron kang urine sa, uh, pro protein sa urine class, you have what we call proteinuria. Now, proteinuria class is classified into three types. We have your pre-renal, renal, and post-renal. Let's start with the pre-renal. From the prefix pre, meaning before. Renal meaning the kidney. So this is a case of proteinuria that would co that would be caused by by events that would occur before the kidney. So these are conditions caused by conditions affecting the plasma prior to reaching the kidney. Yung plasma nyo class that is the blood, the liquid portion of your blood. So, meron kang problem sa plasma mo before it would reach the kidneys. This is usually seen class in infection in inflammation. Increased low molecular weight plasma proteins like hemoglobin, myoglobin, acute phase reactants. Now, para maintindihan nyo to class. In, in cases of infection, there are some infections class that can cause what we call intravascular hemolysis. From the word intra, meaning inside vascular blood vessels. So inside blood vessels class, hemolysis would occur. Hemolysis would refer to the destruction of RBC. Now your RBC class, when it is destroyed, it would release hemoglobin. So kapag meron kang intravascular hemolysis, you would have too much hemoglobin in your blood or in your plasma. And when that happens, class, it can cause pre-renal proteinuria. Another condition, yung myoglobin naman. Yung myoglobin naman, class, this is the hemoglobin found in muscles. So kung meron kang muscle injury, 
you would have so much or too many myoglobin causing again increase uh increase protein substances and also seen in multiple myeloma sa multiple myeloma class to explain this class you have an increase gamma globulins ano ba tong mga gamma globulins na to class to simplify ang gamma globulins nyo class are also known as your antibodies so kapag meron kang infection, meron kang infection, meron kang meron kang gamma globulins, you have you have too much gamma globulins that could also cause a prerenal proteinuria. Now let's go to the second type of proteinuria class, yung renal proteinuria. This is known as the true renal damage. So this one is seen in damage to the kidney. So ang problema talaga dito class is your kidneys. This is this can be seen in glomerular proteinuria wherein the selective filtration class is impaired due to damage in the glomerulus in lupus erythematosus excuse me and streptococcal glomerulonephritis then there's also your tubular proteinuria wherein there would be tubular dysfunction including seen in heavy metal poisoning Fanconi syndrome and viral infections. Then microalbuminuria. This is caused by the development of diabetic nephropathy and cardiovascular diseases. So, paki take note class yung types ng renal proteinuria, yung glomerular, tubular, and microalbuminuria. Now, there's a condition class known as orthostatic or postural proteinuria. Now, si orthostatic or Postural proteinuria class is a physiological type of renal proteinuria caused by prolonged standing. Prolonged, inayaan mong mag-stand class yung urine mo. Inayaan mo lang siya. Now, what would happen is that prolonged standing would increase glomerular pressure. Sorry, hindi pala yung urine yung prolonged standing. Sorry ha. What happens is that, uh, you, let's say class, a uh, person. A person would stand. For a very long time. For a very long time. And that could cause this type of condition. So prolonged standing of a person would increase glomerular pressure. Leading to the ability of proteins to cross over. Once horizontal position is assumed, proteins gradually decline or decrease. Common in jobs that would require prolonged standing. Such as those... Sales lady. Then we have your post-renal proteinuria. Proteins are added. Please think of proteins are added to urine as it passes through the lower urinary tract. Now, this is usually seen class in infection information in the lower urinary tract. Presence of semen, prostatic fluid, vaginal fluid, and menstruation. Now, let's go to the third uh, parameter class, yung ketones class. Now, ketones class, if you're familiar with the Krebs, yung Krebs cycle nyo. So, this is one of the intermediate products of fatty acid catabolism affecting acetyl-CoA. Now, acetyl-CoA class would enter the Krebs cycle if fat and carbohydrate degradations are appropriately balanced. The first step of the said cycle is the condensation of acetyl-CoA with oxaloacetate to form citrate. Now, there are cases class where our body is depleted with carbohydrates, thus prompting oxaloacetate to form glucose. Okay, to explain this class, sa Krebs cycle nyo, Krebs cycle class is the cycle wherein uh, fatty acid is being removed from the body. Yung, yung taba, yung fatty acids natin. Now, in the normal uh, in the normal Krebs cycle, ang napuproduce na una dyan is yung acetyl-CoA. Si acetyl-CoA would react with oxaloacetate to form citrate and it would be released. Now, there are some cases class wherein... Uh, malnourished tayo. If we are malnourished class, we have no carbohydrates. Now, ang carbohydrates, di ba, if you're familiar, 
they are the energy source of the human body. Now, if there is no carbohydrates, instead of using carbohydrates as the energy, they would uh, use they would use oxaloacetate to form glucose. In this case class, yung acetyl-CoA nyo cannot enter the Krebs cycle, meaning hindi siya maririmove sa body natin, which is then diverted to the formation of ketone bodies. Now, there are three ketone bodies class. The most abundant, yung pinakamadami, 78%, is your beta-hydroxybutyric acid. Yung acetone, the least abundant, 2%. And then the second most abundant, si acetoacetic acid, 20%. So do take note of that. Now, what is the principle of your urine ketones? Now, the principle here, class, is based on sodium nitroproside reaction. The pad is impregnated with sodium nitroproside that will react with acetoacetic acid in an alkaline medium to produce a purple color. The test does not measure beta-hydroxybutyric acid and would react with acetone only with the presence of glycine. So take note of this class. In the normal, ano, in the normal test ng ketones nyo, sodium nitrop nitroproside would only react with acetoacetic acid. But if you add, uh, if you add glycine, if you add glycine class, it would now react with uh, with beta hydro hydroxybutyric acid and acetone. Acetone could only be detected with the adhesion of glycine. That is why current reagent strips class would now detect its presence. So, ang purpose ng glycine nyo dito class, by adding glycine to the reagent strip, you are able to measure acetone. Now, yung pinakamadami class na ketone, si BHA nyo, is not tested. Ang reason kung bakit siya hindi measure class because it is readily converted to acetoacetate by removing its carbon dioxide. So that's the principle class of sodium nitroproside reaction for urine ketones. Now, what are the interference? Excuse me. False positive results class could be seen in the contamination of talin dyes, highly pigmented urine, presence of levodopa and other medications containing sulfhydryl groups. False negative results would be seen in prolonged standing urine. So kapag nag-prolonged standing ka class, class nagdi-decrease yung uh, ketones mo. Now, what are the other tests for ketones class? We have the acid test, tablet test. So you would usually do this, depende sa laboratory, if you want to confirm a positive dipstick for ketone. So a tablet containing sodium nitroproside, glycine, disodium phosphate, and lactose would react with urinary ketone to give a purple color within 30 seconds. Grading of color reaction is reported in terms of negative, small, moderate, and large. Now, what are the significant amounts or, or clinical significance of urine ketones class? So, normally, small amounts of ketones are present in our blood, usually around 2 to 4 mg per DL. But increased concentration class would be seen in cases wherein our body is unable to use carbohydrates as fuel. Instead, our organs would adapt to utilize ketone bodies. So, gagamitin ng katawan natin, class, yung fats. Yung fats as an energy source, producing ketone bodies. So, high levels of ketones can also cause the patient's urine and breath to smell fruity. So, pakitandaan yung class, ha? yung ihi mo, saka yung hininga mo would smell fruity if you have high levels of ketone. Seen in diabetic acidosis, insulin dosage monitoring, starvation, malabsorption, pancreatic disorder, strenuous exercise, vomiting, and certain inborn errors of metabolism. So do memorize their clinical significance. Now let's go to the fourth uh, parameter class. The fourth 
parameter class is bilirubin. Now, si bilirubin class is found from the breakdown of hemoglobin in the reticulo endothelial system. Now, there are two types of bilirubin, si B1 at si B2. Now, for you to understand this class, si bilirubin class is usually formed kapag nasira or nagkaroon ng RBC destruction. As I mentioned kanina, hemoglobin would be released if an RBC is destroyed. Now, hemoglobin is further degre degraded into two products, yung him saka yung globin. Now, si him class would be converted by the enzyme him oxygenase. Si him oxygenase class would convert him into your biliverdin. Now, in the liver class, si biliverdin nyo would be converted by biliverdin reductase into your B1 or your unconjugated bilirubin. Now, another enzyme known as your UDPGT, si UG, UDPGT class would stand for gluco Ronosil transferase. So that is the enzyme responsible for converting B1 into B2 or your conjugated bilirubin. Glucoronosil transferase. Now, B2 class would be further degraded in the intestine by bacteria into urobilin urobilinogen and stercobilin and also degraded itong urobilinogen class degraded siya into stercobilin also into urinary urobilinogen so that's the overall uh, summary class on how bilirubin is formed from the degradation of hemoglobin so try to memorize the enzyme class now let's continue now, the principle for bilirubin is the diazo reaction. So, in the diazo reaction class, the pad is impregnated with diazonium salt, which would react with conjugated bilirubin class B2 in acid medium, producing a pink or purple acidi. Now, the diazonium salt used is either dichloroaniline. Dichloroaniline class is the most common diazonium salt. Or it could also use dichlorobenzene diazonium tetrafluoroborate. Color is then reported in terms of negative, trace, 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, and 4 plus. Now, what are the interferences for bilirubin glass? So, false positive if it's contaminated with indicants, phenazopyridine, metabolites of ludine. False negative if you expose it to sunlight class, ascorbic acid, and high concentration of nitrite. Yung sunlight nyo kasi class, your sunlight can produce, uh, could cause, could cause um, bilirubin to be removed or to be destroyed. Now, there's other tests for bilirubin class, yung ICTO test tablet. So, in some laboratories, again, ginagawa to, to confirm a positive bilirubin. So, a tablet containing SSA, sodium carbonate, boric acid, and diazonium salt, para nitrobicin diazonium, para toluene sulfonate. The reaction will take place upon reaction to B2 to give a purple color within 60 seconds. Grading of color reaction is reported, reported qualitatively, so meaning negative or positive lang. Now, what is the significance of uh, urine bilirubin class? So, pakitandaan to, in your urine bilirubin test, only B2 is tested since B2 is the only one found in the urine. Now, um, please take note class that B1 cannot be found in the urine because it is attached to albumin. Di ba nga ang albumin nyo class is a very large protein? So, hindi siya makakatagos dun sa sa kidneys nyo, sa nephrons nyo. And because of that, only B2 could be detected. So this is usually an, a sign class that the patient has liver disease. Seen in the cases of hepatic jaundice, such as 
hepatitis, liver cirrhosis, and liver cancer. Also, positive class in cases of post-hepatic jaundice. Pag post-hepatic jaundice, this would affect the bile duct seen in cases of gallstones and pancreatic cancer. Let's go to the fifth parameter class, yung urobilinogen nyo. So when conjugated bilirubin is excreted through the bile duct into the intestine, it is acted upon by bacteria and is converted to stercobilinogen and urobilinogen. So balikan natin yung picture kanina class. Okay. Ito siya. So, sabi doon kanina, class, if your B2 in the intestine is degraded, it would form urobilinogen. Si urobilinogen nyo, class, would either be further degraded into stercobilin, which would be found in the feces, and urinary urobilinogen. So, dito tayo sa urinary urobilinogen magpo-focus. So, byproduct siya class ng B2 degradation. Now, stercobilinogen would remain in the intestines and is further oxidized to stercobilin. On the other hand, urobilinogen is absorbed from the intestine into the blood where it would recirculate again to the liver and excreted again back into the intestine. Recirculated urobilinogen is oxidized to urobilin. Stercobilin and urobilin are excreted in the feces giving a brown color to stool. So, pakitandaan yung cost ng brown color class ng stool. Stercobilin and urobilin. Urobilinogen would appear in the urine because as it recirculates in the blood, it becomes soluble and can readily pass through the glomerulus. Therefore, a small amount of urobilinogen, less than 1 mg per dl or 1 ehrlich, unit is normally present in our urine. Do, do take note of that. Now, the principal class, there are two principles for urobinilogen. The first one is chem strip. It utilizes a diazo reaction in which urobilinogen is made to react with the diazonium salt. Yung diazonium salt used here class is your 5 Methyloxybenzene diazonium tetrafluoroborate, producing colors from white to pink. Then we have your multi sticks, another principle. Sa multi sticks naman class, instead of a diazo reaction, you would use an Erlix aldehyde reaction, in which this time, urobilinogen is made to react with para dimethyl amino benzaldehyde, also known as yung P. Dab. Para dimethyl amino benzaldehyde. Giving color reaction changing from light to dark pink. Color is then reported in terms of negative trace 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, and 4 plus for both principles. Now, what are the reaction interferences class? So, false positive seen in the presence of porpobilinogen. Indicants, amino salicylic acid, sulfonamide, intake of methyl dopa, procaine, chlorpromazine, highly pigmented urine. False negative class ng urobilinogen seen in prolonged standing or use of old urine, contamination of formalin, and high concentration of nitrite. Now, what is the clinical significance of urine urobilinogen class. So, impairment of liver function would decrease the ability of liver to process urobilinogen recirculated from the intestine. So, kapag may problem yung liver mo class, the, the recirculation of urobilinogen is affected. Moreover, extensive hemolysis of RBC class can cause increased blood urobilinogen. Excessive urobilinogen remaining in the blood is filtered by the kidney and would appear in the urine. So these are seen in the following diseases class. Liver diseases like hepatitis, carcinoma, cirrhosis, hemolytic disorders, transfusion reactions, and sepsis. 
let's go to the six parameter class so blood so for blood class dipsticks for blood are capable of detecting even minute amounts of rbc they are also able to detect free hemoglobin from lice rbc the urine is normally free from blood class hemoglobin or myoglobin that is why class um if it's if it's positive for blood there's a problem with your kidneys already because in in a normal kidney glass it should be able to filter blood hemoglobin and myoglobin now the principle for blood here class is the pseudo peroxidase activity reaction the heme portion of hemoglobin and myoglobin contains heme peroxidase which would catalyze the reaction tetramethylbenzidine glass is used as the chromogen for this pad in the presence of free hemoglobin and myoglobin the pad changes from yellow to a uniform blue green in contrast intact rbc's are lice when it comes in contact with the pad and the liberated hemoglobin would produce an isolated speckled blue green color reaction color is then reported in terms of negative trace 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, and 4 plus. Now, what are the reaction interferences for blood? So, false positive would be seen in strong oxidizing agent, bacterial peroxidases, and menstrual contamination. False negative class seen in high specific gravity of urine, formalin, captopril, high concentration of nitrite, ascorbic acid, and failure to mix urine specimen. Now, what is the clinical significance class of urine blood? So, small amounts of blood, as little as 5 RBCs per ml, is considered significant. So, findings should be correlated with microscopic examination. Okay, for you to understand this last sentence. If you are positive class for blood on the reagent strip, microscopically class there is a high possibility that you would find rbc's in the urine or visually or physically class physical test red or reddish ang color ng urine nyo. so you need to you need to compare that now there are different significance here. We have yung tinatawag nating hematuria. When you say hematuria class, there are intact RBCs in the urine. Seen in cases of renal calculi, glomerulonephritis, phyelonephritis, tumors, trauma, toxic chemicals, anticoagulants, and strenuous exercise. While hemoglobinuria naman class, to simplify, presence of hemoglobin in the urine, this is caused by the presence of lice RBCs in the urine, seen in hemolytic anemia, transfusion reaction, severe burns, sepsis, malaria, and bite of brown recluse spider. Then we also have your myoglobinuria, presence of myoglobin from muscles. Seen in muscle trauma or crush injury, convulsions, prolonged coma, muscle wasting disease, rhabdomyolysis, and heroin abuse. So do take note of that class. Now let's go to the seventh parameter. We have yung leukocyte esterase. So leukocyte esterase would refer to your WBCs. WBCs would secrete enzymes class, and one of those is the enzyme LE. Or leukocyte esterase. LE is produced primarily class by neutrophils, which are increased during infection and inflammation. The most common WBC in urine class, please take note, is the neutrophils, but normally they are very low in number. Detection of LE would signify a positivity of UTI. So, ganito yang class. If you want to confirm if a patient has UTI, Visually, ganito yan, in norm, normal cases. In the physical exam, ang clarity niyan would be turbid. In the chemical exam or in the reagent strip, pag may UTI ang patient, 
it would be positive for protein, positive for LE, and would also be positive for nitrates, or nitrites rather, for nitrate. And then microscopically, if you view the urine in the microscope, there would be the presence of white blood cells and high amounts of bacteria. And uh, iba rin yung smell niya class. So that's the characteristic of UTI class. Turbid, then sa reagent strip, positive sa protein, LE, and nitrate. Microscopically, you could find WBCs. Now, the principal class is that the, you would measure here leukocyte esterase activity. So, leukocyte esterase in the urine will cleave acid ester. The acid already in your reagent pad will be split by LE into two products. So, it cleave ng LE nyo class yung acid ester sa pad. Forming indoxyl and acid indoxyl. This would now produce an aromatic compound and acid. So, ito yung aromatic compound nyo, yung indoxyl, and yung acid, indoxyl nyo is the acid. Now, yung aromatic compound nyo, yung indoxyl, would react with the diazonium salt to produce purple azodai. Color is then reported in terms of a negative trace, 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, and 4 plus. Now, what are the interference class for LE? So, false positive would be seen in strong oxidizing agent, formalin, highly pigmented urine, or in seen in cases of merong kang, if you intake, nitrofurantoin. False negative class would be seen in high concentrations of protein, glucose, oxalic acid, ascorbic acid, gentamicin, cephalosporin, tetracycline, and inaccurate. Timing. Now, what is the clinical significance class? So, normal values of leukocyte on urine microscopic examination is 0 to 5 per low power field. Positive results would tend to require further testing to differentiate true infection from vaginal contaminants. So, women would have higher numerical results than men. So, mas madaming WBC class ang meron sa babae compared sa men. Increased urinary leukocytes are indicators of urinary tract infection. The LE would detect the presence of esterase in granulos, granulocytic WBC and monocytes, but not lymphocyte. So, ang measure lang na LE dito class are those that would come from neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils, as well as monocytes, but not lymphocyte. Hindi kasama yung LE ng lymphocytes. Esterases are also present in trichomonas infection. Yung trichomonas class, this is a parasite. You will learn about that in your parasitology. A positive LE test result is most frequently accompanied by the presence of bacteria. So do take note of that. Now let's go to the eighth parameter, yung urine nitrite. So nitrate is a common constituent of urine. Now, if there is bacteria... If there is bacteria in the urine, nitrate would be converted into nitrite. So bacteria class in the urine would convert nitrate into or would reduce nitrate to nitrate. Now the bacteria would include Escherichia coli, Enterobacter, Citrobacter, Klebsiella, and Proteus. Itong limang to class. They are also known as your enterics. This is a group of gram-negative bacteria capable of enzyme or would contain the enzyme reductase. For this to occur, the urine must have stayed in the urinary bladder for a minimum of four hours. Now, the principle for urine nitrite class is the grease reaction. When nitrite and acidic pH is detected, it would react with an aromatic amine to produce a diazonium salt 
yielding a pink reaction or a pink azodai. Color is then reported in terms of negative trace 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, and 4 plus. The test that does, me does not measure the degree of bacteriuria. Please take note of this. Huh? It does not measure the degree of bacteriuria, but is, it, but is only considered to represent a significant amount of bacteria. So, hindi porket class, it doesn't mean that if you become positive for nitrite, you have a very severe case of bacteriuria. Meaning, talagang may bacteria na yung urine mo. In some cases, kasi class, let's say, you would allow prolonged standing. Prolonged standing of urine. Pag prolonged standing ang urine mo, class, this can cause false positive ng nitrite mo. Bakit? Di ba nga, pag ginayaan mo mag-stand yung urine, dadami yung bacteria. More nitrates are reduced to nitrite. So it could, uh, it just represents na madaming bacteria sa urine mo. And this could be clinically important or just due to having the specimen uh, stand for a very long time. Now, what are the interferences? So, improperly preserved, yun nga, if you allow it to stand for a long time, or highly pigmented urine in nitrofurantoin. False negative class, such as non-reductase containing bacteria. So, aside from the enterobacter, may ibang bacteria siya. So, that could cause false negative. Insufficient contact time between bacteria and nitrite. So, less than 4 hours yung urine sa bladder. Lack of urinary nitrate. Large quantities of bacteria converting nitrite to nitrogen, antibiotics, ascorbic acid, and high specific gravity of urine. Clinical significance class is this. This is very important for detecting initial bladder infection seen in cystitis. A positive result would necessitate, necessitate performance of urine bacterial culture. Seen in cases of cystitis, phyelonephritis. So, yung phyelonephritis nyo, class, ang urinary tract infection nyo kasi is a type of infection that would affect the lower urinary tract. Now, kapag napabayaan mo yung UTI mo, you did not treat yourself for UTI, it would go to the upper urinary tract. Pag sinabi mong upper urinary tract class, we're talking about the bladder here. Kapag pumunta na yan sa bladder and even the kidneys, it would become phyolinopritis, which is a more dangerous type of UTI. Kasi in that, sa case na yan, makakakita ka na ng mga red blood cells sa urine mo. May RBC, may WBC, and may mga CAS, which I will discuss next meeting in the last uh, last lesson for the mid. Now, uh, inflammation of urinary tract can also detect bacteria, rapid screening for UTI, evaluation of antibiotic therapy, screening of urine culture specimen, use in combination with LE. So those are the clinical significance of urine nitrate. Now, let's go to the ninth parameter. So, dalawa na lang class. Kaya nyo yan. Kapit pa. We have your urine pH. Now, the principle for urine pH is that it would use a double indicator system. Pag sinabi mong double indicator, dalawang indicators yung ginagamit mo. We have metal red and bromthymol blue. So, metal red would produce a color change of red to yellow at pH 4 to 6. So, kapag acidic yung urine mo, class, di ba ang pH nyo would refer to acid, acid and alkaline. So, kapag ang pH, ang urine mo, class, is acidic, <coughs> excuse me, metal red would react forming a color change of red to yellow at pH 4 to 6. Pero kapag naman alkaline yung urine mo, alkaline yung urine mo, class, it would be bromthymol blue. So, yellow to blue siya at pH 6 to 9. 
Now, take note of this class, pH 4 would produce a red color, pH 5 orange, 6 yellow, 7 green, 8 blue green, and 9 blue color. Now, pakitandaan itong note na to class. If you receive a urine, so let's say you're working nasa medtech or intern na kayo, then you tested the urine sa reagent strip. Na notice nyo, ang pH ng urine is 9. In cases that your pH of urine is 9 class, immediately reject the sample because of the following reason. No fresh urine class would have a pH of 9. Most of the time, kapag fresh yung urine mo, acidic yet. A pH of 9 class would indicate that the urine was left to stand for a long time in room temp. And again, prolonged standing of urine would increase or decrease solutes and would also affect uh, certain chemical parameters. Diba nakita nyo, one of the one of the effects of prolonged standing class nagkukos siya ng mga false positives and false negatives sa mga reagent parameters. So take note of that. Now, re reaction interferences class. So as of now, there are no known sources of error talaga. There are no known interfering substances. Ang pinaka-common interference dito is that yung run over from adjacent pads. So pag hindi ka nag-blot ng, ng, ng reagent strip sa, sa towel or sa adsorbent pad. And the use of old specimen. Clinical significance class ng pH nyo seen in respiratory or metabolic acidosis or ketosis. respiratory or metabolic alkalosis, defects in renal tubular secretion, and reabsorption of acids and bases seen in RTA. Renal calculi formation and prevention, treatment of UTI, precipitation and identification of crystals, and determination of unsatisfactory specimen. Now let's go to the last parameter class, yung urine-specific gravity. So urine-specific gravity class is based on the principle of change in dissociation constant of a polyelectrolyte in an alkaline media. So the polyelectrolyte class would ionize releasing hydrogen ions in proportion to the number of ions in urine. The higher the concentration of urine, the more hydrogen ions is released, thereby uh, re lowering the pH. The indicator bromthymol blue on the reagent pad would measure the change in pH. As the specific gravity increases, the, change, the indicator would change from blue with a SG of 1.000 through shades of green to yellow, a maximum of 1.030. Clinical significance class used to monitor patient hydration and dehydration, loss of renal tubular concentrating ability, diabetes insipidus, determination of unsatisfactory specimen due to low concentration, and ang mga reaction interference niya class, false positive if there is high concentration of protein, false negative if it is highly alkaline urine, greater than 6.5. So important steps class in studying reagent strip, each reagent pad have different time frames. So memorize the time frames class. Ha? LE is the longest, 2 minutes, while the shortened or the shortest is yung glucose and bilirubin. Now sa blood nyo class, uh, in the blood reagent pad, there's a possible, possible result that would show a speckled or polka dot pattern. Pag speckled or polka dot yung pattern class, it means that the specimen or the blood is non hemolyzed It is only when the blood would come in contact with the pads that the RBCs are hemolyzed and the enzyme peroxidase is released. Therefore, the reaction is slow. This means that there is glomerular damage class. So when the blood is hemolyzed, there is already hemoglobin or myoglobin to readily react with the reagent. This means that there are disorders like hemolytic anemia, transfusion reaction in blood incompatibility, or malaria. So that 
basically ends class year lesson three, the chemical examination of urine. So memorize them class and prepare for your assessment. Thank you.